Hello and welcome to another episode of Adobe Creative Cloud TV. My name is Terry White and in this episode we're going to take a look at how to use Adobe InDesign to take advantage of the metadata in your photos to actually use that metadata in your layouts in InDesign. Whether you're just trying to create a simple description under each photo, the person's name under each photo, or maybe you're creating a contact sheet and you want other uh, camera information under or near each photo. Well, you can do all of that in InDesign using the captions feature. Let's take a look. The first thing is we have to actually put the metadata in our photos. Now, there's a couple of ways to do that. If you're a photographer, chances are you're using Lightroom. And in Lightroom, you can do that right over here in the metadata. You can put in a title, you can put in a caption, and of course, your EXIF data from the camera is automatically captured. However, if you're a designer or non-photographer, non-Lightroom user, then there's Adobe Bridge. And Adobe Bridge, which is part of your Creative Cloud membership, you can just download and install this application, you also get the ability to edit the headline and description. Now wait, I called it headline and description here, and in uh, Lightroom it's title and caption. Uh, yeah, even though there's different names, they kind of mean the same thing. So. If you're in Lightroom, use title and caption. If you're in um, Bridge, use headline and description. All right, now that you've done this, and basically what I did is uh, I'm going to use these four photos, and I just went in and I clicked and I typed in the name of the photo for the headline. I typed in a short description of it. Same thing here, uh, and same thing for each one of these. So now that I've got um, the headline and description in each one, let's head over to InDesign. And let's take a look. All I've done here is just create a simple layout. So file, new document. Uh, this is just a wide document that doesn't have anything else on it. I'm going to go ahead and place my four photos onto it. So to place those four photos, that is one advantage of using Bridge within Design, is that you can place directly from Bridge where your photos are. So these are the four that I know I want. I can shift select those and go under my file menu and choose place because Bridge knows about InDesign. So once I choose place, it will take me over to InDesign, load up my placement gun in InDesign with those same four photos linked, of course, to their original locations. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and just drag out one big photo, but before I let go, I wanna actually place all four at the same time. So I'm gonna use my other hand and do the up arrow key to increase it to two rows and the right arrow key to increase it to two columns. That will be my four photos. Now I can let go and all four photos will be placed and I can even use, while they're all selected, I can use the fill frame proportionally so that they all look uniform. Okay, so now that I've got my four photos in place, the next thing, I, and they already have the metadata in it, uh, in behind the scenes in design, can see the metadata in those photos. The next thing I need to do is tell InDesign how I want to use the metadata and where and what I want to use. Because there are all kinds of things. Maybe I want the uh, time that the image was shot. Maybe I want the lens that was used or the camera serial number. All that stuff that can be in your metadata. InDesign doesn't know what you want to use until you tell it. So let's go up to our object menu. And let's. this is a two-step process. First step is to tell it what we want. So let's go to our captions. Caption setup. So all we're doing here is just setting it up. And all we're going to do is tell it what we want. So here's that long laundry list of things that in that InDesign can use or bring in. So it could be the color space, the ICC profile, the dimensions, the rotation, the shutter, the ISO, uh, which camera was used, so forth and so on. Well, all I want is the description. That's it. Now, once I do description, you can add more than one thing. So if I wanted title and description, I could have put title first, then click the plus sign and added description. If you want any text to appear before the photo or after the photo, so for example, it could be title by Terry White. I could put the by Terry White in the after, so I don't have to put that in the metadata of each photo. Of course, that could also be um, in the metadata, it could be the author. All right, next, uh, where do I want this to appear? Below the image, above the image, to the right of the image, to the left of the image, wherever you want. I want it below by default. And next, if there is a particular style you want your captions to be in, italic, um, 10 point, certain font, nine point, certain font, whatever it is, you can set up those style sheets ahead of time and pick them here. So whatever you wanna do. 
and how far you want it away from the photo. So if you want it down a little bit, you can press the, uh, you can put in the measurement there of how far you want it down. If you want to group the caption with the image, that can be kind of a cool idea if you're going to be moving things around and you don't want them to accidentally get disconnected. You can go ahead and group them together. And of course, if you didn't group, you can have them appear on a different layer, like your captions layer. So all kinds of finite controls here um, that let me get in and do the kinds of things that I want to do. So I'm going to go ahead and say, um, OK, and nothing happens because that was just the setup, part one. Now part two is where we actually tell it to do it. Now you have two options. You can generate a live caption or generate a static caption. What's the difference? Well, we're going to use live caption. And voila, there they are. There are my four captions that it pulled in from the metadata of the photos, whether that metadata came from Lightroom or whether it came from Bridge or any other source that can put metadata in photos, such as Photoshop, File Info. You can put it in anywhere you want and that metadata comes in. Now, of course, I didn't use a style sheet, so I would go in and I would uh, double click to set these to a different font and so forth and so on. Or, or create a style sheet now and apply it. But anyway, um, let's say that the metadata changes. Let's say someone discovered a typo, someone forgot to put in a name, they changed the description, whatever, and you've already laid everything out. This is the difference between live captions and static captions. A static caption, which we didn't use, would just bring in the text and it would be static. So if the photo changed, your InDesign layout would not change. But since we did a live caption, let's say, for example, this should say a sunset over Earth Lodge in Sabi Sabi, South Africa. I want to now go put that in, but I don't want to do it here. I want to do it so that it's permanent and applies to every layout I've ever used that photo in. So let's head back to Bridge. Let's just select that one photo. And now let's go in and let's see, we did a, a sunset over Earth Lodge, Sabi Sabi, South Africa. And then we'll just go ahead and tell it that, yep, that's it. The metadata has been updated. Now when we head back to um, InDesign, nothing happens except in our links panel. And down here we got one error as well at the bottom, letting us know this link is now out of date. Double click and it updates the link, brings in the new text, and now all my entire publication would be set everywhere I've used that photo. I would just update the link and it would bring in the new data. So that's how we use captions or metadata from our photos or images in InDesign as part of the layout process. Imagine never having to type in the descriptions and people's names and titles and all that stuff in the photos or, or in your layouts. If you just do it in the photos, you're done for good. That's always going to be that photo, no matter how many times I use it and where I use it. So why keep having to put that description in every time I use this photo in the layout when I can do it one time in the metadata? That's it for this episode. Take care. Hope you learned something and we'll catch you on the next one.